In recent years, autism has been thrust into the limelight when it comes to special needs. With so much information swarming around, it's hard to fully grasp what it is and how to engage someone with autism spectrum disorder. What we do know is that autism is growing at an incredible rate, 200% over the last decade, and one in 59 children are diagnosed with it. Whether we have someone in our ministry that's on the spectrum or not, we must be prepared to engage families affected by autism. To get a better understanding of autism, I spoke to a parent whose child was recently diagnosed to hear about their experience. My name is Christopher Toy, and when my son was three years old, he was diagnosed to be in the autism spectrum. Before my son was diagnosed, I never really gave much thought to autism or special needs with needs within the church. When he was two years old, my son uh, went to his regular doctor checkup, and she noticed that he didn't have many words. I thought he was just a late talker like me, um, but she thought we should get him diagnosed. So we went to a speech specialist, and they thought he might have uh, a proxy of speech, childhood proxy of speech. Um, so he went to speech therapy. We took him to speech therapy twice a week, and then he wasn't getting any better. This time he went to get diagnosed, and they diagnosed him to be mildly to moderately in the autism spectrum. So what my son's autism looks like is he has trouble processing uh, sentences now and speech. Sometimes he's also um, very rigid in his behaviors, uh, slightly obsessive compulsive about certain things that he wants to do. He always has to open the door to get in. Just little details that he has to do or else he'll throw a tantrum. What he is able to do is like we found that he's very loving. Like he, he needs us to be happy all the time and he really is affected if, if we're upset. You know, it just breaks your heart that you, you want him to be happy too. There's a lot of ABA uh, therapies for him. So as soon as he was diagnosed, we found out that it's, it's uh, 10 hours a week. So they have to come to our house, in our house every day for two hours, two to three hours. And he has a kind of play therapy where they're teaching him skills and just uh, sitting with him. Plus speech therapy he goes to twice a week and occupational therapy. Um, so my wife's schedule has gotten really crazy because she takes him from one thing to the next and he's like just turned five and then he's going to all these things and so by the time he's done it's 6 p.m. so he, he's all tired and, and frustrated by then um, and at the same time my wife is you know she's she's taking care of two kids and just driving them all over the place so when we're dealing with um, our son who has these random outbursts it's hard to make him understand you know just uh, concepts like wait wait now and then later you'll get this or or do this then he has no patience for that and so we're bringing him to church and no one understands what it's like to raise a son with autism and so they think he's just oh well he's just misbehaving or he's a bad son or, or they're not disciplining him enough we can send our daughter to to go to her class but for him we need to keep him in the service with us because we need to attend to his needs and at the same time keeping him in service it's all quiet and so it's very uncomfortable just trying to you know keep him quiet and, and it, it could be stressful at times so there's a concern that he might he might run away and uh, he might escape and like if there's one teacher watching 10 kids, they might not pay attention to the one kid that just ran away because they're used to kids, you know, just sitting down and, and, and behaving maybe, or just, you know, being part of the classroom setting. But he, he does his own thing, so he, he could run away. I know that it's not his fault. I know that we're doing our best. I know that other people could be understanding. You want the best for your kid and you want uh, them to thrive. You want them to fit in. And just not being able to do that is, is a constant you know, pressure or uh, uncomfortableness. So sometimes it's more comfortable just to be at home. 80% of families with kids with special needs don't attend church because I've experienced it now and it's, it's, it's reality. It's, it is very uncomfortable. Like even just having a kids with special needs, there's, there's a lot of, of, of burden and, and feeling of, of just, I don't know. It's, it just feels uncomfortable to be different. Something that the church could do to help change our experience is just maybe constant reaffirming. We had a great church that we went to um, when our 
when our son would just cry out or something. Um, our pastor would even from the, the pulpit say, hey, and we love children. He would say that every time just to reaffirm us that it's okay. I think one thing that um, having a child with autism has shown me how important it is that a ministry leader does not treat all of your congregation, all of your youth, all of your, you know, disciples the same. So with autism, it's there's a very specific way that each person needs to be treated and it's very apparent. But the same goes if you don't have autism, like each person, you know, has their own background, has their own upbringing, uh, talks differently. And so I think the, one of the big takeaways for me was as a leader, you can't treat everybody the same. If you see a family with a child with autism, I think it would be really helpful just to learn about that kid, learn about you know what their needs are, and then help the parent take a break. Like maybe when they go to church, you can kind of start befriending them, and then you can start taking care of them. And then slowly what you're doing is you're giving that parent not only assurance that you know, you love them in Christ as well, but the thing is you're also giving them a break and you're helping them. Uh, rest and recoup and so that they're able to worship at church as well. In addition to talking with Chris, I met up with the new special needs director of the Western Territory to gain a large-scale picture of autism spectrum disorder. I am Captain Christina Arnold. I am the Director of Special Needs Ministry for the Western Territory Salvation Army. Autism is considered a, a spectrum because it has a wide range of impairments that may or that would affect a person. One person might be have a struggle in one area, not in the other. So the five main areas that are often associated with autism is language, motor skills, perception, executive functioning, and sensory. It's not linear. It's not straight across the board, one consistent level or ability. In fact, a lot of people have a, a range of different impairments that go up and down. Just like every mountain range is different, every person with autism is different. So something like sensory or language, it might be at different levels per person or how they perceive other social skills might, is very different. Currently, the CDC is reporting that one in 59 children are diagnosed with autism. Boys are four times as likely to be diagnosed than girls. Now that there's more understanding of what autism is and how autism affects children or and adults, we should consider maybe changing our programs. Give them a way to contribute to the worship experience. Oftentimes, we focus on what a person can't do and not enough on what they can do. We wait until there's a problem to start communicating with families. We should start communicating right off the bat. Meet with the caregivers, meet with the, with the parents, and find out what works for their person, their, their person that they're caring for. What do they need to succeed in our programs? Their family member might need a buddy, might need someone to be assigned to care for that person specifically but we don't know these things until we communicate. Most people, we have seasons where life's a little more challenging. For families affected by autism, their seasons are a lot longer, and they do not attend church at church programs because they feel that the needs of their children or their, the person that they're caring for is too great for the church. It's a lot of work to get to church, and it's exhausting. They're afraid of being judged, they're afraid that their children or their, their love will not be accepted into the churches. And many of them have actually already been burned by churches. We tend to gauge our programs based on the person's progress. Are they learning the skills that we're trying to teach? Are they memorizing Bible verses? When we, if we first focus specifically on relationships, we can then better communicate the truths of the Bible and of Christ. We know the power of, of what a relationship with God can do to anyone. A family affected by autism is no different. In fact, I would even argue that it's probably greater because the need is there on a daily basis. When explorers ventured west during the days of expansion and came across glorious mountain ranges, you could imagine they were intimidated and potentially fearful of what that journey looked like ahead. 
This did not deter them, and for their perseverance, they were rewarded with the beauty that mountains bring and the Pacific coast. Imagine if they had stopped. What would we miss out on? We have something ahead of us that can feel intimidating, 